Hey guys, Drifter here. Today I've got a video for you on how to win more gunfights in Call of Duty Warzone, because unlike multiplayer where you have no health and you die nearly instantly, there are lots of things that can affect whether you win or lose a gunfight in this mode other than did you shoot first. The gameplay I wanted to open up with was me using a pistol and one mag of an assault rifle to defeat a helicopter trying to splatter me and a whole team of very annoying people. I had to string together 10 years of FPS knowledge, including some of the tips that I'm going to give you today, in order to win this gunfight, and I do want to point out that gunfights, even disastrously unfair ones, can be winnable as long as you keep your wits about you, and of course, as long as you follow the tips that I'm going to be laying out for you today. We have a list of 10 today, starting out with number one is Intel. Intel wins you gunfights. The gameplay you're watching right now is in the top left-hand corner, J-Hub using a drone, and me and Delta Change fighting 2v4 against an enemy team. But good intelligence is half of the battle in Battle Royale and in real life. Nothing will help you win more gunfights than knowing where your enemies are, where they're going, what they're kitted with, what they're doing, and all that sort of information. Most of my deaths in this Battle Royale, and really any Battle Royale, are from surprise fights where people just jump me and I I had no idea what was going on or or when I thought that I was going to be attacking two people but it turned out to be four plus another team coming in and they all got the jump on me and my intel was bad and I picked a bad fight. Having a UAV is the absolute best tool for this job but enemies can run ghost that's why I also like to have the recon drone and do keep in mind that when you're flying the drone even if they have cold-blooded you can manually tag them. Snapshot grenades are fantastic I did a whole episode on those and heartbeat sensors are your friends. If possible, I try not to take a fight without at least one of these things going on during the fight, if not beforehand. And outside of that, you need to use your eyes and ears like a predator, like a shark or a tiger or a lion and something, and take note of everything. Listen to the footsteps, the glass breaks, the movement, the reloads, what's going on. And you shouldn't be afraid to just stop for a second, wait, and listen to see if the enemy's going to make a noise or slip up, because that's just more information for you. Tip number two, and I think that this is my best tip for the day, even if it's probably the simplest one, is to use the pick and push method. This battle royale, like most, is ultimately a numbers game, especially with the health scaled up like it is. So if you're fighting somebody, four versus three, it's a bad fight for those three guys that are fighting you, and just because having more teammates alive with you and fighting gives you a massive advantage in every single engagement. That's why I like to open up fights by getting a pick with a high damage weapon, and by pick that means a down or a kill, and then have a full squad run rush the remaining team. In this video, which you're probably going to see a lot of this today, is you mostly me using the crossbow with the explosive tips, which by the way, unrelated to the winning the gunfights, is an extremely powerful and underrated weapon that I see very few people using. But if I open up a fight by getting a crossbow hit on somebody, and then I can follow up with a full, that's an insta down, and then I can follow up with a full team rush, that squad is completely unprepared for this and under pressure and discombobulated and it works great. Now the crossbow is fine and dandy, most of you will probably be using sniper rifles for this, get a nice sniper rifle headshot, then push, DMRs work fine, getting a point blank shotgun's fine, even RPGs, pretty much anything that gets you a quick down is ideal, even if sometimes it's just hosing somebody who's badly out of position from his team. But once the enemy team is a man down, or even worse, if they're trying to res that down man, your four-man squad needs to rush and play very, very aggressive. Most squads won't be able to deal with the pressure of trying to save their buddy while you're hitting them as hard as you possibly can. Most of them will be scared, discombobulated, and you just have a mathematical advantage, so you're going to roll teams easily. I will say that talented squads, like if you roll up on some pro players or some streamers and people that just play a lot, they can outplay you on this. They can use your aggression to your disadvantage, but that happens only a minority of the time. That would be a very unusual scenario, and that would also go back to number one, is that you need to know a little bit about who you're fighting before you fight them. Number three is pretty similar to number two. I call it soften and push. It's similar to the pick method in that it has the same principle, but instead of getting a kill or a down, what you're instead going to focus on is the armor. Armor is your lifeblood in Call of Duty Warzone. Without it, a leaf falling on you could kill you. A blade of grass, a butterfly could flap its wings and your character dies. When you have no armor, you're extremely vulnerable. Everybody knows that. The enemies are also very vulnerable. So using weapons like incendiary shotguns that chew through armor, C4 that chews through armor, armor, RPGs, or really almost anything, but I tend to prefer the explosives and the fire, get this job done very, very well. And the basic idea is that you want to weaken at least two enemies to where they don't have any armor, and then you do your four-man push. I would say to go for two, if 
one guy is weak but still able to shoot, that's kind of a bad fight because he could just position himself well without healing and the other you're still fighting four versus three and a half kind of. But if you have two people that are hurting and healing and trying to reload and get their armor going on, it's a great time to apply pressure, take advantage of that, and get the squad win. Number four follows right out of number three, which is to apply pressure. If picking or softening an enemy just doesn't work, then you need to apply pressure with your squad. This means that as you approach the enemies, just like Jotaro approached Dio at the end of Stardust Crusaders, you need to be the alpha. You need to take their land. It's not a balls out rush, it's not a suicide mission, and and it's a little bit less aggressive than the other methods I mentioned, but th what you want to do is this time you're going to move and shoot. Cover, shoot, cover. You'll move five, ten feet at a time to the next best cover. You, you know, so you'll you know sprint from one rock to the next, spray them down a little bit, and then just keep repeating this. Your whole squad does this, probably not following you at a line, but relatively close behind you. And you don't have to kill the enemies to apply pressure. Oftentimes you see an opportunity to get a kill, and what you'll do is overexpose yourself, and then you will. Get get picked and pushed, but as long as you move and just put some peppering damage in, you will keep them irritated and damaged. Most teams will not hold their position. Most teams will either flee or reposition or back up to heal, which just gives you more opportunity to move. And if you keep this up long enough, your enemies will actually become psychologically weak because they'll think that you're a god squad. They'll think, oh my god, every time I peek, this guy just shredded my armor. Oh my god, every time I popped out, he just kind of d destroyed me. And it becomes a feels versus reels. The reality is that you may not be the best player and you're really not dealing that much damage to them, but subjectively, subconsciously, they're just constantly taking damage and they're like, oh god, who are these guys? So that by the time you've done your move, shoot, move, shoot, move, shoot, and you're in position to have a real fight, it just becomes a normal gunfight, but with the enemy team panicked and playing poorly, which gives you a massive advantage. As Cross once said to me when he was teaching me how to play PUBG, he said, if somebody has a hill that I want, I just apply pressure until they die or leave, then the hill is mine. And that's basically what you're doing here. You're trying to take land from people and you just move and shoot and move and shoot and they're either gonna run or they're gonna die. And that's pretty much all it needs to be. Number five is a very short one today and that's No Mercy. Battle Royale is a cruel mistress. More than any other gaming mode, it emulates the cruelty of the real world around it. Fights in this mode are inherently unfair. It is not incumbent upon you to have a fair fight because you're not doing cowboy quick draw, show off, quick scoping stuff like you are in multiplayer. You're not fighting over sea flag. Your job is to survive this mode by any means necessary, and often that means being cruel and picking on people at their weakest moments and punishing them for existence. That is a battle royale fight, so you don't have to challenge people to the face, shoot them in the back, blow them up, cheese them, do anything you can to win, just don't have mercy, because mercy will get you killed. Number six is that you should use the buddy system. When you're pushing an enemy squad, try to always have at least one teammate nearby you. It's kind of nice if you're stacked side by side. That's not always the best position, but you can definitely multi-fire like that. And what you want to be able to do is push in two people at a time so that you can trade downs if the first guy loses the gunfight. It's just like trading kills in Search and Destroy. Your buddy can also cover your backsides or your flanks if things are getting spooky. And your buddy can sometimes be a meat shield or bait if they go down first and you're the one pushing, you might could bait in enemies into going for the finish and then saving your whole team. It's not ideal. I don't like doing this method. J-Hub has been doing that to me for almost a decade now, but the bait method and the meat shield method do work. Team fire is also nearly impossible to beat in Warzone. If me and one teammate bust into a room, guns a blazing, and there's only one enemy in there, there's almost no way for that person to defeat both of us. I will say what you don't want to do is you don't want to stack your entire team in a row or in one room. It makes you very vulnerable to explosives and incendiary rounds and fire and all sorts of other problematic stuff. It's best to split your four-man squad into groups and you have two people, buddies, push from different directions. One group will probably take the more direct route and the other group will be going around the back looking for stragglers or an alternative angle or something like that. And one of the things the buddy system does is it really punishes people who've played a lot of multiplayer Call of Duty. I find myself doing the same things in Battle Royale that I do in multiplayer, such as, well, you know, all of my team is Arva here, and like that means the enemies probably can't spawn there, so I just need to go to the other side of the map and shoot in from that direction, and that's how I get my multi kills. That doesn't really work here, and a lot of people are still playing like that, myself included sometimes, but if you're running the buddy system and you run into enemies that are playing like that, you're going to be able to punish them and take advantage of that very, very greatly. 
Number seven today is another very straightforward one, which is you should fight from an elevated position when you can. I mean, this is pretty basic, right? Anakin lost this fight against Obi-Wan Kenobi because he didn't have the high ground. The high ground is the place to be 100% of the time. And similarly, don't fight uphill if you can avoid it, which means literally avoiding all uphill fights. Height gives you the advantage of being able to just take two steps backwards and having nearly perfect infinite cover. It makes it much easier for you to accurately throw grenades and other projectiles down upon your enemies. You have to calculate for bullet drop a lot less. And your enemies, similarly or oppositely, will have no such options. They can't just back up into cover. They can't throw grenades easily. They have to compensate for their bullets oddly. It just puts them in a very bad position, so fight from an elevated position as much as possible. Number eight today is that you should mount your rifles for long range fights only. I know that mounting caught a slight nerf recently, but it has a very specific and good use in Warzone, which is that it really helps you pepper people at extreme ranges, mostly with the full autos. So if you were to mount an M13, like the M13 laser class, mount an AK-47, MP7, Odin, all of these weapons are hilarious to use. It cuts their recoil near to zero. So you can full auto people at ranges that you normally wouldn't be able to hit them at all. Like if you weren't mounted, you might hit three of 30 shots, but if you mount, it's so accurate, you could probably hit them with 10 or 20. I will say that you should not mount in close quarters combat. You are way too exposed and it greatly limits your mobility. You won't be able to pull back into cover very quickly. So mounting up close, very bad idea. But if you see an enemy crossing a field and you think to yourself like, man, I don't have a sniper rifle, but I do have this AK here. It'd be kind of a hard shot. I don't know if I could track him. You just need to find a tree, a rock, a window, something, mount that gun, and then you can just about full auto hose them. That's what mounting is for in Battle Royale. Number nine is, you're going to think a no-brainer, but it, it, it's, I still screw this up all the time. You've seen me screwed up a thousand times in the video here today is headshots are king in Battle Royale. You have a lot of health, takes a lot of bullets to kill, time to kill is king in these close quarters fight, so why not shoot them in the head and just kill them maybe 30 to 50% faster? Headshots have a huge multiplier, they kill people in way less shots, they drop them, they delete me in them. The problem is that Call of Duty base multiplayer has trained me for years not to go for headshots because they generally didn't matter. Like headshots in Call of Duty for most weapons just aren't worth it. It'll save you like one shot to kill, but they have high vertical recoil and the flinch makes you miss. And a lot of times, honestly, up until this more recent game, I was just shooting legs and just letting it kick up. But the legs deal less damage, the chest deals less damage, the head is juicy juicy and vulnerable and hurts so bad and they matter so much in Battle Royale. I am still personally working on training myself to go for more headshots and I think that all of you should do the same and aim for the head as much as humanly possible. It makes a colossal difference. And finally, at number 10 today, you need to know when to run away and regroup. There is no shame in running away from a bad fight. There are some bad fights that you just can't win. Sometimes it's because your intel was bad. Sometimes your pick and push failed because you didn't get the pick or they got a quick res. Sometimes another squad rolls up and tries to third party you. Sometimes you just play badly and you get hosed and you're hurting and suffering. It happens to everybody. It happens to me a million times on stream. When these times come, just run away and live to fight another day. Have your team fall back with you as well. You can't run away solo because then you're just a coward. But if your team leader can make the call in time to have you all fall back, that is super effective. Oftentimes, you can just regroup and be ready for a second attempt at this fight in as little as 30 seconds. And in the worst case scenario, you know what? You just run away and avoid losing a fight early and you'll let somebody else pick them off and you just continue advancing along, surviving in Battle Royale because your job is to live and survive. Killing is an essential part of that, but it's not the only part. You can easily just use hiding or running or stealth to your advantage, and there's no shame in that. Those are my top 10 tips for how to win gunfights in Call of Duty Warzone. I think that they will help you all quite a lot. And I do have a bonus tip here for you at the end, and that's just that Battle Royale is random. It's unfair. It's mean. It's cruel. Bad things happen. Sometimes you're just going to get screwed even if you follow all of these tips and you never miss a shot. And the, the ending clip to this video is just a perfect example of that. I got this live on my stream on Mixer, by the way. I stream there probably about five days a week. The link is down there below in the description. We play with fans, subscribers, people all the time that come in. If you've watched this far into what's probably about a 15-minute video, then I'm going to assume you're a super fan. So why not just 
just come hang out and play with me. I stream all the time, linked below. Just click this little show more and click the Mixer link. But yes, this clip shows you just how unfair Battle Royale can be. And sometimes you just have to accept that. Guys, that's all for this video. If you enjoyed, don't forget to like, favorite, and subscribe. Drifter out. There's gonna be boyfriends around here somewhere. No. Are you... One single C4. Right